41 more Minecraft things to do when you're bored at home. For whatever reason, when you're stuck at home, the boredom is sure to set in. So today, I've loaded up a bunch more activities, quests, and projects to keep you busy and cure that boredom. Thanks. So to start off, we're gonna need a bunch of materials. So how about going to the nether? And no, not for just what's there, but actually for building one of these, a piglin trade farm. Trading with piglins is such a great way to get all kinds of different materials, from ender pearls to obsidian, you name it, it's great. And don't worry if you don't have any redstone knowledge, because building one of these is so simple that even I could do it, and that's saying something. Frankly, the hardest part of it might just be trapping the piglin used for it. But if you are looking for a steady stream of piglin for your trades, then how about going to one of these, a Bastion Remnant? Now admittedly, these things do look a little worse for wear, so how about actually refurbishing one of these Bastion Remnants when you conquer it? By sprucing up the place with some of the new wood types that were introduced in the Nether update and really just making it look more like a home, you can make a really cool base out of one of these things. Once you get the piglin out of there, this is a great way to have a ready-made base when you head to the Nether. Although, if you want to make sure that no other hostile mobs start to spawn next to your base and take it over, slabbing the Nether is a great way to get over that. Clearly, light level isn't as much of a problem in the Nether as it is in the overworld, so to stop spawning here, we have to place down half slabs or buttons to get mobs not to be able to spawn. Once you have all those blocks placed out, then you'll have a completely hostile free nether, which is pretty sweet, and especially helpful if you want to control the nether spawns. Which gives you the perfect opportunity to build an AFK fortress farm. By converting one of the many nether fortress cross sections into one of these, then you're able to net yourself plenty of hard to obtain mob drops, and best of all, you're able to get them in bulk. So whether it's blaze rods for your furnaces, magma cream for your burns, or best yet, wither skulls for your boss fights, this is the best way to get a whole bunch of them. Which means you'll have wither skulls as far as the eye can see. But hey, those aren't doing much good in a chest, so how about putting them into an auto wither killer instead? By setting it up like so underneath the end return portal, you're able to use all of these different minecarts to literally squish the wither dry of its nether star. And best part about it, it's reusable. So for all of those beacons that you need, no sweat, you can do it with one of these. Although unfortunately, even with all of the beacons in the world, you're still not gonna be able to get yourself fire resistance with one of these, which makes certain parts of the nether still off limits to you. However, if you wanna get rid of those lava lake issues, then no problem. All you have to do is just basalt or drain the nether. By rubbing ice across the lava lakes, we're able to completely safeguard these and make bridges for ourselves. Which is cool in its own right, but if you really want to do the job right, then you gotta drain the entire nether using gravity blocks. Sure, it's slow and tedious, but it's gonna make all your searches for netherite later on so much easier. Which, let me tell you, is an absolute necessity if you're trying to get a full netherite beacon. While many others have tried this challenge, I haven't actually seen anyone do it. And the closest attempt I've seen so far is TK, who did a netherite shell around a gold beacon. But if you want to set yourself your own world record, then by all means, doing a full netherite beacon is on your list. And as you place the last block to finish that up after hours of work, how about switching on the haste to effect? Because you're gonna need it if you want to clear out the area for this, a high efficiency witch farm. If you're a redstone minded or technical player, you're well familiar with one of these. And while there are some smaller designs that are able to get you some less efficient results, for the kind of redstone we're gonna be needing, we need to pump this up way faster. So to do that, we need a hole. Not just any hole, but a big, huge hole that lets no other mob spawn. So if you don't wanna dig that all out by hand, and I don't blame you, then you're gonna need a world eater. Now, as the name suggests, using one of these, you'll drop down carpet bombs at TNT and completely level the area for you. Now getting the slime blocks and mechanical parts for one of these is not an easy task, but if you're willing to do it, then any hole or quarry you need dug, it's gonna be done and then some. Though, if that's still not enough TNT for you, then I've got just something right up your alley, a TNT blast chamber. Many of us are familiar with the fact of TNT clearing out blocks in regular farms, such as a tree farm, a cobblestone farm, whatever. But what if we could combine all of those farms into one big funnel and have all of their different blocks just feed into this thing? That's a TNT blast chamber. And if you're looking for a hassle-free way to get all the blocks you need for one of your big builds, this is the way to do it. That said, if you're gonna try to have a tree farm feed into this, then your current bone meal storage isn't gonna cut it. So the answer to your problem there is an automatic bone meal farm. I personally find that kelp works pretty well for this. And trust me, the design that we have here does not speak to the amount of bone meal we can get out of one of these things. And if you're willing to crank that efficiency on one of these composter chains, then you're never gonna have to worry about crafting bone meal from skeletons again. 
But hey, maybe you don't want to worry about bone meal at all because you don't need it for farms like this, which is a villager based breeder and carrot potato farm. And yeah, you heard me right. One of these designs is able to kill two birds with one stone and both breed you new villagers as well as get you plenty of crops. So if your town's looking for a good harvest and a population boost, then this is definitely the method you got to choose. And with all that influx of new villagers, you're going to see a lot of the same faces walking around. So if you want to diversify a bit, then how about trying to find a villager of every single biome variant? There's more variation here than I think a lot of us even notice. And plus, it gives you quite the bit of a scavenger hunt trying to track them all down. And if you want to make them even more valuable, then push them through a villager zombification machine. By using one of these, we're able to manipulate the way the game treats cured villagers. Which is, if you trade with a villager that you cure, then you're able to get way cheaper trades. Although, word to the wise, you might want to build one of these on hard mode. Because in other modes, it's only a percent chance that the villager zombifies instead of a guarantee. Which, if you want to get back at that zombie for all the villagers that it's slain, then you gotta run it through a mob head farm. By funneling in creepers in your mob of choice, you're able to make it so that when those creepers blow up, you'll get the head of the monster that it just killed. Although clearly a regular creeper isn't cut for this, so what you gotta find is a perfect stormy location and a good channeling trident to get all of those charged creepers needed for your mob head needs. After a few rounds of this, you'll have all the heads you'll need for your prize trophy room. And if you're looking for even more prizes to show off, then you need to get a fully stacked aquarium with every tropical fish variant. There are a surprising amount of these different suckers to catch. And for the amount of exploring you're going to need to do to get a full set, I'm going to have to recommend a wetsuit, or at least some water breathing potions. But luckily, through the help of water buckets, we're able to stash them in a totally humane manner and get them back to our base. Which will help your little aquarium become one of the famous tourist traps just like Monterey Bay. And if you're looking to offer a little bit more R&R for those incoming travelers, then I'd highly recommend designing a redstone minigame for them. While laying one of these out and playtesting it might seem like a daunting task, all it takes is a couple of the new target blocks and redstone circuits to make some really fun carnival games. And hey, from that point, all you need is a randomizer circuit and boom, you turn that carnival game into a way to take all of your friend's diamonds. So why not just own up to it and house that entire money grubbing scheme inside of a casino? All you need are some ornate walls, some cocktails, and most importantly, games of chance, and you'll be able to turn into the fat cat business person I know you can be. Putting your operation right up there with some of the biggest in Vegas. And you know what? If you want your base to look even more like the Sin City, then how about building some of those other historic landmarks right there at your base? Las Vegas has the Eiffel Tower, you have a sand temple. I think it works out all right. Plus, it gives those tired tourists even more of a reason to visit your resort. I see this as a win-win. Although, maybe the glitz and glamour isn't all for you. Let's scale it back a bit and build just a house. Although, everyone in Minecraft's built a house, so why not try to build the same house in different biome variations? Once you settle on a design, then you can take that and replicate that same idea in different biomes like a swamp, a desert, or whatever, using the blocks that are available to the region. Which means if you're looking for a change of scenery from your plane's base, but you're still looking to have that feeling of home wherever you go, this is the best way to go about it. And before you place the blocks on that tundra version of your house, I recommend placing a dome of glass above it. Because then you got yourself a snow globe, and that's too good of an opportunity to pass up on. By building the holiday feel laid out right in this time capsule, you're able to have a slice of Christmas whenever you want. And bonus points if you use command blocks to add particle effect snow while you're in there. That's a good touch. Though, scrounging up the glass for one of these is probably your most expensive task. So if you're looking to tackle that glass dome in an easier way, then you're going to need a sand duplication machine. For some reason, when we use the end portal like so, we're able to bounce these gravity blocks in and out of the dimensions and make it so that we get loads of sand, or really, whatever kind of gravity block you want. And since collecting these blocks can be quite the hassle when you've already cleared out the nearby ocean floors and mesas, this is a pretty great way to get a renewable source of sand. Though, just be aware that you are going to have to clear out some of the end portal frames to be able to do this. But once you do that, you can pump that newfound sand to get all the kind of glass that you need. Before you head back from picking up your sand in the end, don't leave so fast. Because if you really take the time to just look off past the end island into that blank expanse of nothing, you're going to see just how much it resembles space. So why not push that to the limit and build our own space station right out there in the outer limits? 
And if you're just as nerdy as I am, you can push that task even further and build your own Death Star right out here in the middle of space. And if you think that sounds crazy, you wouldn't be mistaken. But it is definitely possible, because Logical Geek Boy built one of these in his own survival world. So if you're looking for something to build in the end, then a technological terror might just be your next project. Although, what if you're at your new void base and your elytra breaks down? Well, no worries, because as Simply Sark pointed out, there's a really terrific way to launch yourself over end void gaps. And I'd highly recommend that all of you take the time to get good at this. It might just save your life. With the right amount of rip tide, slow falling, and ender pearl throws, we're able to launch ourselves hundreds of blocks across these gaps. If you're looking for a new way that's pretty easy to build and gets you all across the end and back, this is your new method. But if you're looking to conquer the last dimension once and for all, then you're gonna have to kill the Ender Dragon 20 times. Now, that sounds like an oddly specific number, but hear me out. Because every time that we rematch the dragon and kill it, we get a new end gateway portal. And for those of you who don't know, by killing the Ender Dragon this many times, we're able to get a whole ring of these end gateway portals around your main island. Which creates a really cool visual, and quite the trophy if you're trying to show off to your friends. But maybe you don't want to fight the final boss in the game just to travel a couple hundred blocks. Which, I completely hear you. That's why, for the more technically minded, we've got piston bolts. By making one of these propulsion-based minecart speedways, we're able to really launch ourselves to different points of the map. Especially if we're talking about building one of these in the nether, where you get to multiply the speed that you're traveling by 8 blocks per second. Though carving out the tunnel for one of these through lava and netherrack does not sound like a fun time, so what you're going to want to do is build a hole up to the nether roof and build it there. Up here, you get plenty of real estate to build the things you want, and without all the hassle of below the nether roof. And while I hear you, getting rid of a lot of bedrock does not sound like a fun time, as soon as you take the time to actually put through and do this, you can get a seamless way to blend your nether roof safe travels to the more hellish side down below. Plus, it gives you plenty of open air for ice boat travel. And speaking of ice boats, how about taking those off the straight path to your nether hub and instead putting them in one of these curved raceways? From there, you're able to have a lot of fun and a lot of speed as you race your friends around the track. Plus, by switching up the kinds of blocks that you use, you're able to have off-road sections just as well as speed boosts on your new track. Although I am going to say, if you're going to go through the effort of building one of these, maybe just do it in multiplayer, because the competition in single player is just not as fierce. And speaking of which, if that friend happens to beat you, I've got just the perfect way to get back at them. And for this, we're going to have to take a trip over to their prized animal pen. And while you could kill them yourself, that's a little too obvious, and honestly, it's just not that fun. So to really crank this scheme up and keep your hands clean, you're going to have to trap a vindicator in the animal pen. According to Minecraft behavior, and as you can see on the wiki, when you name that Vindicator Johnny, it's gonna go ballistic against any mobs around it, giving us the shining way to ruin your friend's day. And if you remember to throw down the splash potions of invisibility on this thing, it'll give your friends such a headache, and you plenty of sweet, sweet revenge. But as soon as you've gotten over those psychopathic tendencies and you want to mend bridges with your friend, then making them a scavenger hunt is a pretty cool thing to do. By giving them a map with a little red X that marks the spot, you're able to send them off on a wild goose chase to go find some sweet loot. Though if you're still not over that loss in ice boat racing, you can turn this into a great fake treasure hunt and ruin your friend's day. And after you've been evicted from spawn for all your crimes against humanity, then how about taking to the skies and making yourself a new socially distanced Minecraft floating base? By taking the time to terraform and sculpt your own island up in the clouds, you're able to have both a natural and hard to reach Minecraft base to keep all the riffraff away. Or if you're not too interested in reaching the vertical build limit, then why not trying to reach the horizontal build limit? Or as we also like to call it, the world border. Because even though many people like to believe that Minecraft is infinite, if you travel 30 million blocks on either the X or Z coordinates, you're gonna see a world border. And that, folks, is the end of Minecraft. So if you're looking for some alone time on that multiplayer server, you're not going to get much better than this. Though, if just seeing some measly world border isn't enough to satisfy your journey, then how about dialing it back to the beta versions of Minecraft when the Far Lands still existed? And if you're up for the bonkers task, then you can match Kilo Crazy Man's insane journey and walk to the Far Lands on foot in survival. This'll definitely take some time to do, but as you can see from Kilo's stream, the payoff of reaching it is absolutely unmatched. Or maybe you don't want to visit the far reaches of Minecraft, and instead, you'd rather keep a little closer to spawn. 
Well, you're in luck, because with this command, you can actually reduce that world border inwards and give yourself more of a smaller yet intimate Minecraft world to play in. The Mindcrack community did this for one of the seasons of their server, and it was pretty cool seeing more of the area around spawn populated as opposed to the normal nether hub and spread out method. And if you're looking for the right group of people for all those SMP adventures, then how about joining a new small server community? For me personally, I find that whenever I'm down, a great way to get me busy is just by joining a small server of friends and playing some survival from them. It's a great way to learn new things about the game, and whether you join at the beginning of the world or right in the middle, you also get to have that really rare experience of seeing a server community grow, which I think is pretty awesome. Though, maybe you don't play Minecraft for the experiences, but instead, for that sweet cash. In which case, Mr. Beast and Skeppy have got you covered. By joining a YouTuber's Discord and staying in touch for all the different kinds of prizes they're giving out, you're able to win yourself some serious cash. Just be ready for the awkward conversation where you explain to the accountant or your parents how you made all that extra dough. But regardless, the odds of you winning that sum are pretty slim. And quite frankly, you probably got better chances at beating the game in hardcore mode. So if you've never tried that out and you're looking for a challenge, I highly recommend booting up a world in this. At least once, just to get a feel for it. And while I'm not saying you're gonna have an epic five-year run like Philza did, I'm not saying you won't, so why not give it a shot and at least have a different side of Minecraft to try out. Or if those regular game modes are just too bland for you, then there's plenty of custom game modes hitting the scene nowadays. So whether you're trying to beat one of the numerous impossible or cursed game modes that are out on the market, or my personal favorite, which is Fundy's Baby Mode, these custom game modes are a great way to take your survival world in a whole different direction than Mojang intended. And if we're talking about flipping the game on its head, then why not actually flip the game on its head and use this sideways gravity mod? I'm sure you've seen plenty of people try this out in your recommended feed, but through the use of the up and down and all around mod, you're able to change the way that gravity works and literally play the game sideways, upside down, you name it. So now the real question is, can you beat the game under those conditions? And if you're looking to make the game mind-bending in more ways than just gravity, then I highly recommend downloading the No Cues mod. With this, your whole perspective on Minecraft is going to change. And if you're looking for a different outlook on your world than just cubes, then this is definitely the strangest way to do it. And if after all that you still haven't had your fill on mods, then making your own mod pack and playing with your friends is an awesome way to do it. Though by the time you set that up and get all the mods working with each other, you're probably going to be able to leave your house and then you can put the whole thing behind you. And if any of those projects sound interesting to you, then make sure to mind that subscriber or down below. And above all else, have a good one, alright?